I think we're live. Hey, everybody, this is JD here, and uh, surprise, I have a nice guest here, Mr. Reggie Simmons, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector. Did I do that in the right order, Reg? You did indeed do it in the right order. Uh, very good. <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody. I haven't been on since Christmas, but uh, I'm going to try to see if I can find out who's on and who's not. Uh, I need to turn down before I make a rookie mistake. I think it's just us right now. I know Cop Comic Core is going on. Yeah, so. I saw that. Uh, tonight's a busy night. Luis, hey, Luis. Luis just got here. Cool. Well, one of the things, Reggie, is just um, your video the other day about Signature Series was was really good, and I think everybody should uh, definitely watch that to get an idea of what you're pay paying for if you're buying a book that's brand new, that's signed by somebody that's still around and going to comic cons and showing up at your local LCSs or whatnot. And then you run into some other issues where, you know, do you get a book signed by that icon and do you get that book slab? That's where I was. One of the stories is it was used to be pretty easy to get one of these guys signature on here. This guy was really easy and he died like a month a after this. So, this was Herb Trimpey on the death of Wolverine. It was one of those things where I bought the book and they all signed it for free. Steve McNiven, uh, Charles Sully, and Herb Trimpey. And I didn't think anything of it until he died. And someone's like, oh, that book's worth more money. I'm like, actually, it's kind of sad. But that's just me. Um, again, you know, one of the things is uh, that Jeffrey Comic-Con just talked about was collect and do what you want to do. Hey, Bake the Snake, how we doing in jam session? So, um I ran into a situation, that situation right there, when I was like, God, I wish I should have had that slabbed. And I've got two books that I got signed before slabbing was even around, or at least I didn't think it was. This was, uh, one of these definitely wasn't. One of these was signed in 1988, and one of them was signed, I think, in 1997. Yeah, this says 97 when I had it signed. So um, I'll show those, but let's see. We got six people jam sessions. Uh, what are we doing? Um, but Reggie, you're right. Like I would never have Jason Aaron who shows up at every con I go to and Chris Stevens shows up as well. I mean, I paid cover price and they just signed the book. And another guy who signs books for free, every time you bring to him, no matter how many you bring him, Scotty Young. So it's a lot of fun. You know, so, so, I, so for me, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of whatever it is that makes you happy and floats your boat. I say do that thing. Right. And I, I think that's that's something that w whatever the topic is that I happen to be discussing, that is like paramount. Right. It's your money. Spend your money how you want to do it, because that's not my thing to ever tell somebody how to spend their money. And really what I was trying to facilitate in that in that video was the discussion around how do you value books, raw books that are signed, whether you are trying to buy them or whether you have them and want to sell them, or whether you have them and want to insure them. Like, how do you assign a value to that? Um, and I think some people assume that it was for the purpose of sale, and they were like, well, put it on eBay, and whatever price it goes for, that's the value. Well, it's not every, you don't want to necessarily sell it versus understanding how much it's worth because you want to buy it or because you want to insure it or something like that. And so I just think that's an important decision to make. It, it, it's a very good point, um, and I should have let off with that, where somebody you know, says, I've got a raw Stan Lee book. You, know, if you guys have seen this. I had it signed here June 28, 1988. Um, there's pictures on the back and everything like, like that. But um, this book, I don't know if I should slab it or not. I mean, it's a classic Daredevil 16. I mean, uh, Spider-Man 16. But it would have to get some kind of a, I don't know what the color is that CBCS does versus a green label from um, CGC. Uh, it's not going to grade high. It's no better than a, with this nice big chip out here, probably no better than a four. Yep. Uh, but those that's that. If anybody has any books with the early Spider-Mans or anything from this era, be careful of that chip. That's a pretty common thing from 1964 to 1966, I think. Now here, let me let me illustrate something real quick. Keep that book up. Okay. Which book is worth more? It's the same, uh, same book. Same book. And so let's say that these books were both fours. I don't have that chip out of the corner, but let's say that they were both 
fours, would you pay more for that book because it's signed or more for this book? Like that's, that's the whole purpose of the conversation. And Perfect. So, like, would you, and, and these aren't necessarily modern books, right? Cause this, this is a little complicated because they're not modern books and because Stan has passed, but, but let's say that you were looking at these, would you give him a slightly higher price, like a half a grade or a full grade um, extra on, you know, for a sale because his is signed. Because that's a good point it's, yeah it's like it's tough and that was the whole purpose of the conversation right. was how do you decide you know yeah what what grade is your 300 the one that's signed by everybody uh the 300 is a 9.6 okay so so is mine so that's a no-brainer then but and i was I, saying if i had a 9.8 mine also has three signatures right well that's what i was going to get into too uh signature sometimes it's good to have most of like I only have this the these next two books, my next two slabs. I might as well show. Hey, Tony Sanders, um, what I got for Christmas has a lot to do with today and me personally. So, my wife is awesome. I love her to death, and she's out there. She's hanging up stuff on my daughter's third birthday party we're having tomorrow. Um, happy birthday, Victoria! Uh, so I got two slabbed books from uh, Flip Mode Comics um on instagram and i showed them to my wife and she did the whole legging and l looking at them and somebody might have guessed it i know somebody i am me saying did you see these books and this is a silver surfer 14 in a 60 but it's signed by stanley in a slab very cool not the only one of these in existence and i got a Thor 161, that beautiful Galactus versus Ego cover, also signed by Stanley. But there's something real special about these two. Both of these books were signed the exact same date. Oh, and, wow. the, and the date is my birthday. <laughs> so happy birthday, Stan Lee. Today would be his 96th birthday, I think. These were both signed on, which I guess, you know, it's over. So December 10th, 2011. They were signed, and they were two books the guy had signed that day, my two favorite characters. And the best thing about this Silver Surfer 14 is I ever said, somebody said, would you ever have Stan Lee sign a Silver Surfer? I said, the only one I'd ever have him sign would go with the whole theme of I only wanted him to sign books he wrote, which is all the Silver Sur Surfers and the Thors early. It had to be he, he wrote it, and I'd like a Spider-Man on it. And, and I, there wasn't a Thor with Spider-Man on it right there. So those are the two gifts. And in that, we got a mystery box of comics, which we're going to open up in a little bit. That's but this cool. discussion, thank you very much. So both two books, my favorite two characters, signed on my birthday by Stan Lee. Can't go wrong. She didn't pay a lot for it either, considering um, that he's no longer with us. And they're classic books, if you ask me. Classic co covers. Of, one's a Bushima, one's there. But back to the discussion here, premium versus not. This is a book that I cherish. Now, this book, in any condition, is 3 to $4. All right? This is just a Doctor Strange one-shot called the Doctor Strange Special. What's significant about this is this is the only cover of Doctor Strange, and it's a wraparound cover, and I can pull out the, another one, that's done by Mr. Bernie Wrightson himself. Now, I never got a Bernie Wrightson signature other than this one, in person. This is the only one I got in person. It wasn't worth slabbing at the time, in my opinion, or having CGC do it because I was brand new to the slabbing game. Um, or I even know if it was even around yet, but somebody said, oh, you should have had a slabbed one because now nobody knows if that's him. I'm like, well, I know. I have a picture of there. But to bring up red, you know, a point about multiple slabs or anything else, um, there are certain people I always wanted the slab signed book I pay a premium for, mm -hmm. and that would be a, a Stan, because she paid a lot more than what a Silver Surfer 6.0 would go for for this, because of Stan, but also because of the date up to here. Things that will never change about this book. Stan Lee signed it, and the day he signed it, right there. So this is going to be intact for forever. That's what makes it there. Stan is one. The other one... Now, I got this for a small, very small fee. This is a Bernie Wrightson, the highest graded one on CGC, and he's not signing anymore, of a Swamp Thing 3, first uh, Abigail Arcane and Patchwork Man. 
pretty key book in this in the uh, Swamp Thing era, but there you go. So paying for a book signed versus not paying for a book signed, what, what premium do you put on it? And I personally think if it's signed by one of those two guys that's deceased or maybe, a, you know, a, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody else who re recently, the guy who did Ghost Rider, all those, I might, you know, any of those guys. But getting a book signed by multiple people, yeah, that's one of the things I take a premium on. So this is a cool Guardians of the Galaxy. It stands on this as well, but there's a premium I paid for this variant just to get multiple. And that was one of the things I always said. I wouldn't get a multiple book done. I wouldn't get a single signed book done unless it was those two icons there. But everything else I liked was always to be multiple. Todd McFarlane, Dave Michelini, I think is how he pronounced his name. And I had this two different dates, and it's a pretty fun little homage cover right there. Um, yeah. So it's... And now comes the dilemma with signed books. Reggie brought up the multiple signature books. It's really hard to do it yourself. So sometimes I know you've handed it off to someone and they've done a work. That is such a great way to do it. Now, I, unfor I fortunately have had that experience. Um, the same that you had where it was great. And, you know, maybe you want, for anybody in the chat that's never done this, it's pretty cool. And Reggie's had, like, you hand the book off to someone and they just take it. It's, so. it. it's actually a pretty scary thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So basically what happened with me is that I showed up at a con with, uh, with a couple of books to get Stan Lee's signature. I wanted to meet Stan, and I wanted to get Stan's signature. That was like my objective for going to this con. I showed up like two hours early. So I'm the, I'm the first person in the CGC line, and... I'm, I'm making small talk with the lady that, that is the organizer for this thing. And she says to me, do you know who, uh, who did the art for the book? And I'm like, yeah, John Romita. She's like, I'm meeting him next month. Do you want me to take your book and to have John Romita sign it as well? And so you can't really say no to that. <laughs> but then, there, then as soon as you say yes, there's that knot in your stomach. And you're like, so you're going to take my sign book, take it away. And it's supposed to magically come back. So um, not only did she take that book, but she took the ASM 300 as well. So, <laughs> so like I had just gotten these books and she, she takes them. And um, it, it was a great experience because I probably, like Tom McFarlane, I think has limited signing. Correct. Uh, John Ramita is a little tough to get as well from what I hear. Yep. And so um, it made perfect sense for me to have her facilitate it because she was also doing these private showings. So basically what I found out is like, the, so the day before Stan was at the convention, she met with him and got him to sign a ton of her books. Then he does the, the show and you know leaves. But what she does is she has these private meetings the day before the show to get all the signatures. And so, well, I think with uh, Tom McFarlane, she actually went to his office and got his signature there. Nice. Um, but it was a great experience. It was a little nerve wracking because the book disappeared for quite some time, not only with her having to get it signed a month or two away, but then it had to still go to CGC and right. there. And so it was five months yep. before I got my books back. But it was it was worthwhile. Exactly. And you paid a premium, you know, you didn't, you, you whatever you had for your 300, there is an intrinsic value to that now yeah. emotionally for you. Yeah. But in, if there's somebody who's looking at this saying, well, getting a book signed increases the va value. That is true in many cases. I've heard people say you'd never get an AF 15 signed and you never get a key. signed. I think to everybody, you get whatever you want signed. Yeah. You know, right. and that's up to you. Yeah. Um, if you keep it right there, if you're doing it for insurance purposes and everything else, the slab helps. I know for I, I've had a lot of insurance questions about, you know, that Stan Lee book to me is I, you can't, I can't put a price on this cause this was done in 1988 and I can't even tell you what I paid. I probably don't think I, I think I got the book as a gift from the shop. You know, <laughs> uh, I think it was part of this whole thing with their, there and I got a Daredevil uh, uh, sixteen, which was also, uh, the, which is the mirror cover of this, signed by John Romita. Uh, but I can't find it, so 
flip mode is actually one of these guys that's looking for one of those books for me you know he's like does it have to be in a slab i'm like well yeah i would i don't know i guess so maybe and he's like well you don't know if you want that book in a slab and i'm like well it's not Stan, it's John Romita. I mean, no offense to John, John Romita, but that was the reason why I like that book, is that's John Romita's first Spider-Man, um, which is the classic Spider-Man artist post-Ditko, you know? Um, by the way, G.I. Guy, did you ever hear the story? I, I found out the story yesterday of why Ditko left after uh, ASM 38. I don't think I... Was yeah. it... It was conflict with Stan, I thought, that he died. It, it was a conflict over revealing in ASM 39 the identity of the Green Goblin. Yes, I think I did hear that. Yeah, I never heard that. But you're right. So, and uh, a lot of the books I showed that were older, I'm going to show a modern book from this year. Now, if anybody has gotten the um, signed book packages, I've had a bunch of these. Um, Midtown Comics got... Donnie Cates and Francisco Mattina to sign this book. And this is one where I said, yeah, take my book, but I want him to write We Are Venom on there. And uh, him to write something else, Mattina to write something else. And he wrote down Live Rock or Live Rock. I don't know what he writes. But um, God, the, the Newton ranks. But this is a book where there is this book is still worth the same price whether it was signed or not, in my opinion, because Cates is everywhere. Yeah, A lot of books. And I know Mattina signs. I know he's hot but he signs but to me i was supposed to have the 800 one signed by dan slot but it came back a nine six and they never had it slabbed and i'm like well i didn't mean that guarantee a nine eight but but i guess if you do buy a book that says hey we guarantee a nine eight if we don't get a nine eight we're not going to charge it for the book it was a nine six i would have taken it but whatever yeah, it's not that, like that, that book's going to be worth a lot, you know. I think that's one of the important things. Um, it, it, you know, if you, if people go back and watch the video that I recorded, there was a lot of really insightful comments that people kind of posted on on the video, and, and some of the, the comments were along the lines of, "You have to look at like who it is that's signing, where they're signing, the quality of that signature. Does it detract from the artwork?" And I mean, it becomes not just the simple thing of is it signed or not signed. It, 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 there's a lot more to it than than just that. You, know? you are 100 percent correct. Some people signed everything, Stanley, and he knows where to put his signature. You know, he's one of those there. Some people that I've talked to that are brand new in the comic that I said, "Hey, can you sign my book?" Uh, an early Mark Brooks signed a cover where I couldn't see it. So, and Jason Aaron did the same thing on an early uh, scalped. So I said, just sign the inside then because yeah. it was there. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things. Now I'm doing a task this year is to go to cons and get some books signed. They do it every year. They're behind. Oh, also I got for Christmas. I might as well show this. This is one of my highlights of my Christmas. This is the highlight of my Christmas. My wife <laughs> is crazy. She, <laughs> this is a photo uh, a, a cover. She's got me mo a few of these. Uh, this is the uh, JD's Kids variant edition of Silver Surfer number four. I didn't know it came out, but she just superimposed my daughter on the, the Scotty Young Thor and on the Scotty Young Silver Surfer is my son's face. And this now is a permanent part of the wall back here. And she got me an extra copy for my uh, what's office, the print? too. What's, what's the print run? Uh, the print run right now. What, how many did you have made up? Four? I think four oh. of them. Yeah, I got all four right now. I'm gonna have the kids sign them for this <laughs> for this video. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that awesome. yeah, that's fun. Um, but um, that was nice. But that whole tub right here—that's all signed books that I have done at cons, and uh, I just do it because I like meeting the artist, if it's a cover artist or the writer, and I try to get that on every book cover artist, writer, or interior artist. A lot of times nowadays it's more common that they're all interior. Uh, they do the same, except for like this one. Uh, Diodato did the, this one, who does a lot of Hulk. So it's Jeff, Jeffrey Comic-Con here. Guy does a ton of Hulks right there, and uh, which is why I recommend you everybody read the Vader series, which came to an end. But another thing you brought up about signatures is a book that's worth a dollar versus a guy who... This guy down here, Bob Hall, I mentioned him before. He's a legend. He was the editor of Marvel with Stan during this time, and he did a lot of covers and was the editor of various series um, for Stan. And he signs and does things. He's a local guy here. And 
everybody's like, oh, that's Bob Hall's signature. Bob Hall does not charge for anything. Yeah. We want you to buy a, buy a print. Sit down and talk with him. He tells stories about the bullpen. He was there in the 70s. And he talks about, you know, he his travel from D.C. to Marble and how Jack Kirby told him, well, you never like it over there. And then Jack came like a week later back to Marble. It was great. You know? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so signatures, you know, I'm on a quest. Uh, and, Reggie, say so you don't really head to cons and stuff like that. So would you ever – head somewhere to get books signed is there like a place where you want to go and get books signed? i know you did that with the stand would you do it again yeah i mean i, I think for me it, it depends on the artist you know okay. um and it depends on the book as well so like if mark bagley were somewhere good call i, I have some mark bagley signatures from my childhood but i honestly don't remember meeting him. i and i know that i, I met him right um <laughs> I have a, I think I have like a Mike Mignola signature. Don't remember meeting him. Um, I, if, if, um, if Jim Lee were somewhere, I'd probably go meet him. You know, That's cool. for me, for me, the signature isn't necessarily about in, in increasing the value of the book for the purpose of sale, right? It, it right. is honestly more like the stand thing was my recognition that he was getting older and that I didn't want to have that shoulda woulda coulda you know and it's like i don't like crowds i don't like standing in line that is mm -hmm. not my thing but for stan i did it i mean i shortcutted the entire line and all the process but <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like dude i literally jumped to the front of the line that's I, so great i had a hookup that got me to the front of the line and that's how i got my signature that's you know? great um but but yeah if, if like jim lee were somewhere i'd probably go that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where he is an example. Um, I actually pulled out my books that I want to get signed at a con coming up in March at C2E2. A bunch of us are going to be there. Um, George Perez is going to be there, and I'm deciding on a, a key book right here that's probably worth a couple of hundred bucks, or a hundred bucks at least. Ass Master, that's a good book. Yeah, I want him to sign where the Avengers is. I want George Perez to sign this cover because this is the first Avengers character he personally created. Yeah. And I do think this is one of his top five uh, covers he did for Marvel. Uh, there are a lot of Teen Titans fans out there that know George Perez is probably best known for doing the Teen Titans and my man Thanos. So I was like, which ones do I want him to sign? Well, I already got him to draw one. I didn't want him to do on any one's there but these are specifically george perez variants i don't know if he signs a lot of them or doesn't or i don't really care but i think these two would be cool signed by george perez they're like not going to increase the value of the book maybe they will but i don't care i want him to sign these two his own variants you know you know uh, one, of the, one of the things that 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 really strikes me and and um you know again this is not necessarily me passing judgment i just think it's fascinating when t people take books that are like lower grade books that will sell for let's just say a hundred bucks right and they get that book signed and now they want to charge eight or they want to try to sell that book for eight hundred dollars yeah I, I, like, that's that wasn't a good book to begin with and now because of the signature it doesn't like triple the value or quadruple the value yeah there isn't a signature on there unless there isn't a sign. I mean, there are celebrity signatures that people pay premiums for, which I'm going to get into there. Um, a quick, quick story. One time I had a Hulk book and um, it was a Hulk versus Wolverine cover. It was one of the ones that actually one of the ones that you got. Mm -hmm. And I had everybody sign, including Stan and everybody in Bob with Hulk. Um, Lee, uh, Larry Lieber was on it. Uh, his brother was on it. Herb Trimpey was on it. Everybody involved with both Hulk and Wolverine. That's cool. All of them were on it. Right. Except the fact that it got passed down the line at each person at a con. And this is one of those where I give these people the book and it comes back. And I get the book back in a slab and it's beautiful. It's a 9-8. And I go through the signatures. I'm like, well, look at John Mamita and Herb Trimpey. And then Lou Ferrigno's on it. Oh, man. And I'm like... Okay, I get it. He's the Hulk. <laughs> but I never wanted celebrity signed comic. Yeah. So I think the book is ruined in my own opinion. Now, 
did I sell that book at a premium because Ferrigno was on it or because of everybody else? Ferrigno actually charged for 50 bucks for his autograph, which yep. is why I said I thought it was only a couple hundred bucks. I didn't know it was 300. So, but I had everybody sign it and I eventually sold it. But speaking of celebrity books, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to do with this book. I want Clark Gregg from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Colson yeah. to sign this. Colson's cool though, bro. Be because he is cool, and Coulson I don't think cool. he's ever signed anything. I've never seen this book signed. Colson is a cool dude. I like him. I, I follow remember. him on Twitter. He's good. I mean, he just seems like a good cat, you know? Yeah, that's a good book. That is a hard book to find at a distance. Right. Yeah, I've, I've got I've got a few of them, and I'm like, um, and the funny story is Battle Scars, the series, is one of my top five runs. Mm -hmm. But everybody's like, why do you like it? There's no – because it's 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 on its own. It doesn't sound like a superhero Marvel book. Yeah, yeah. It reads like a war combat story, CIA kind of thing, and it just reads really cool. It's S.H.I.E.L.D. It's pretty much there. It's Cheese. Well, Cheese now Coulson. Yeah. Um, That's a good book. I love this book. Yeah. Uh, but the other books, uh, now this is a debate one. This is a huge book for me. This is a John Buscema Wolverine one, probably not a 9 8, but not far from a 9 4. Underrated. Maybe higher. Underrated. Would you have Chris Claremont sign this book? Did Chris have anything to do with that book? I thought Chris wrote it. I'm not sure, brother. I thought Chris is a writer. I have I have a couple of copies of it, but I'm honestly not sure whether he wrote that one. Too. Oh. I have I'm to sure look that up. I'm sure Who? somebody can Google it real quick. I'll let us know. <laughs> but that that is an underrated book. It is, and I I want to I I do want to grade it because a it's one of my favorite Buscema covers. Um, somebody in the chat want to look this up? Who wrote this thing? It is a um, now back to writers. Somebody who the cover Big artist Big Oops, Will sorry. says yes, he wrote it. Okay, cool. Now, here's the thing. Would you have just the writer write sign it? Because Buscema's passed. I would. I think Chris Claremont, I mean, this is one where people are like, it's a key. If you get it graded, you could sell for 120 bucks. I said, well, if I put Chris Claremont on it, is it going to go down in value or up in value? Or I do I really care? I want Chris Claremont to do this. There you go. I, I wouldn't care about the value. I want to right. meet Chris Claremont. Why? Exactly. Because he wrote X-Men for 17 years. And so you're a big X-Men fan. Brother. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. See, I want to meet Chris Claremont because of all the X-Men stories and any Wolverine story, anybody with the X-Men, this is the only one I really liked. Yeah, yeah. I love Patch. You know, Wolverine's best run is Patch, in my opinion. It's just, it's darker and it's there. And this is the one where he goes into Japan eventually. It's just a good storyline. I love the cowboy hat look and everything else. And here's another one. I just want to get Marv Wolfman to sign this. Now... Do I get Marv Wolfman to sign a Tomb of Dracula or something else? Obviously, I'm a Tomb of Dracula fan. But this is one where it's a key now. Yeah. If Rick Buckler, who did the cover, and John Buscema, who did the interior, are both passed, the only one alive left is Marv Wolfman. Marv Wolfman's an icon. And this is a character that Marv Wolfman created, which is why I'm really interested in that. I know Claremont did not create Wolverine, but definitely... Wolfman's idea of, uh, of of Nova was from the early 60s. And then he eventually came out and did it in 19, what, 79? I think this book was. It's 30 center, so it's post-75. So. The Jeffrey Comic Con is basically saying that that's a, a $1,000 book right there. It's 9.8. This is not a 9.8. No. So here's a question for you, though. It's an 8.5, maybe. Would you would you buy that book signed by one of the deceased creators and then have the one living creator actually sign it? Okay, it would be tough. It would be hard. There is zero, as far as I know, signature series John Buscema's do not exist. Okay, that's good to know. Yep, because he passed in January of 2002, January 11, 2002. And, but slabs were around before then, but I didn't think they were doing signature series. At least they weren't going to cons. It was in its infancy. So I've never seen a John Buscema there. I've seen a Kirby, one or two Kirbys. Um, but that's, again, around that time. Buckler Pass, I don't know how long ago. I think he's on a few of them. Would I have one to have a Triple Crown, so, so to speak, like I have with a few other books, like you know the writer, the interior guy, and the cover artist, like this Darth, Darth Vader, or the Dan Jurgens and 
John Romita Jr. and Klaus Janssen signing this book. I would do that for certain books. White Well says, get those red labels. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's what I was going to ask now. Here's the thing. The, the red label on the the scarlet label so to speak would be the green one i think or somebody you know everybody says oh my god i got my book back and it's a pur purple if you're into the early silver age and gold golden age a purple is not the end of the world um an end of the world on a new book sorry reggie is god. that yes. you know well, well said yeah. actually, but um I actually basically don't this that. deserves one there so but I love talking about the – this is kind of a response video with Red Ridge. I wanted him on it because he said, ponder the discussion. And I actually – I am you, him. I am Reggie. Minutes after that, that thing debuted saying, <laughs> I've been discussing and debating in my head how to deal with signature series today versus I used to get everything signed. I mean, all the – that's every – I didn't care what it was. I said I want it signed by the writer in there as long as it wasn't signed by Lou Ferrigno. My friends to this <laughs> day still bring up that Lou Ferrigno saying, what happened? To you? What, what's the matter? Did Lou Ferrigno sign your book again? And they're like, oh, no. You know, I, one time I waited in line for – um, uh, I forget who to sign. I waited in line for – uh, it had to be R Ramita to sign a specific book. I'm waiting in line, and John had to take a lunch, and then I was like, God, I got to catch a flight. Got to go back, and I'm going to miss it and everything else like that. And my friend says, ah, that's all right. And Lou Ferrigno was there. He goes, have Lou Ferrigno sign it. I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, so Jeffrey Comic-Con is asking a question about the red label. And uh, basically, uh, CBCS is uh, authorized or verified signature books is a red label. So it's like, it's like the equivalent of the yellow label for CGC, only it's not witnessed, it's verified. So, right. And it's verified by Beckett, if anybody's into sports cards back in the day or anything else. And this is what a Beckett letter of authenticity did that my insurance company made me do for the stand there with the dates on it and everything else, the date I had it signed. And they verified he would have been there at that time. And this, by the way, this alone, this piece of paper costs seventy-five dollars. Yeah, this is how long ago it was when you wanted to verify and insure some something was there, and it has this little sticker here that is literally they don't want to damage the book. They wanted to put another copy of the sticker on the book. They put it on the inside over here, and CBCS is now owned by Beckett. So I'm just trying to get them to say. You've already verified it once. Yeah. Are you going to verify it again? Wait a minute. They put it, they put it inside the book. Yeah. The cover. On Not on the cover. They put it on a piece of paper inside oh, the book. And I've had this, and it's been in this. It's not oh, sealed. Don't, don't take it out. Don't okay. It, it. It's not sealed, but in here, it's got this plastic liner in here that I haven't broken underneath here. Yeah. Where it just sits in this. And it's been sit, sitting in this for a while. Um, but this is what I had to do. And this is a versus you know obviously i love the fact that cgc you know between the two of them uh but i definitely want these two together they belong together in my opinion they belong you know my the two books i got for christmas which i'm gonna show again at the end uh for those of you that missed it you know, but um this is one i wanted to get that red label and i the only thing is what white whale you are probably the worst salesman for cbcs out there uh, uh, your 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 tor tortoise and the hare kind of did not come true, you know, um, and that's a shame because I know other people that are dealing with CBCS on there. So here's here's one here's one of the questions I have for you. You've been in this game, uh, I do believe, a lot longer than I. Thirty um, years, yeah, yeah. We, I, I wasn't gonna put a number on it, but but now that you did, thirty years. Okay, so you've been in this game thirty years. So there was there was a point. At least I think where signatures transitioned from being in the inside cover to actually being on the cover. Yep. Do you remember when that transition occurred? Have uh, yeah. Why it occurred? Because I think I have a thought, but I want to see what your thoughts are. Okay. I remember that I wanted Stan to sign the cover. I had wanted Stan to sign the cover of that book. Yeah. And he was says that a lot of times he signs the insides. Mm -hmm. And this was in the 80s and stuff like that. Well, I said, well, there because a lot of people didn't like signed books on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, it was and it was always signed in ballpoint pen. Yes. 
and this was Sharpie. Stan was probably the first one ever using Sharpie signing covers. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like they what they would do, like for example, in two thousand, uh, when I met John Buscema, they weren't signing comic covers. It was right. wasn't you weren't giving them books to sign. <clears throat> you weren't doing it. Um, you were giving them posters. You were buying posters and having them sign that or having them do sketches for you. That right. was huge. I think it actually changed tw two times. The first time is the invention of the slab. Yep. Another time is the invention of the sketch cover. Yep. And a sketch cover, to me, changed the game because one of those things that occurred was um, going somewhere and getting a sketch. Now, this is here's something where I wanted to throw this part out there on the discussion, too. If you have somebody that you really want, like a, an artist, and he signs for free, but a sketch is 80 bucks, and you're going to bring him a. You can either give him a huge book to sign or have something done personally or get a sketch. And one of the examples I'm going to show you is. Um, so I'm going to say the timing of it was probably mid-2000, 2003, 2004 was the signed book change. Uh, Reggie, to be honest with you, I remember getting books signed on the inside cover in the 90s. Um, that's what some of those are. I, uh, whenever Batman the Cult came out, which was a storyline in the 90s, every one of those we had signed on the inside, nobody signed the outside. Jim Starlin and Bernie Wrightson signed that for me on the inside. I gave it to a friend of mine for his birthday because he loved it. And I thought it was a nice gesture because he's he's been a good good guy, and I like sharing that stuff. But one of the things here is the sketch cover. Yeah. This is the one of the earliest sketches I had done, and this is 2011, but some of them are 2007, 2008. Whenever they first started doing sketch covers, getting Walt Simon's signature on a Thor book is really cool. Getting Walt Simons to draw Thor, to me, much cooler. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of those things where if you ever meet John Byrne, you have to ask him to draw that John Byrne or Jim Lee. Um, have him draw your guy or John Romita Jr. Have him or S Senior. Have him draw your Sp Spider Man. Yeah. Um, it's a way to get original art without paying for original art from Walt Simpson book, and it's a great Thor. I mean, it's. He, it didn't take him that long to do, and it always ticks me off. But he actually puts the date there, which is the same date on top here. It's hysterical. Um, but uh, Walt Simonson, and but when I have a lot of sketch covers, there's like five or six of them I had done. Um, I went crazy with the sketch covers. I went absolutely this particular book and Infinity One. I probably bought. I still have a stack of. I maybe have 30 sketch covers that are untouched <laughs> that I want to, I can't wait to just hand it to people. That's yeah. the other thing I do at cons is I always bring one or two sketch covers and said, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? And they say, what do you want? I say, do what you want. Headshot, you know? And he goes, I'm like Thor, do you want to, you know, and I, you know, there's a few up there, but that's one of those things. So signatures to me, when they went from the inside to the back, is not that long ago. It's maybe 20 years at the most. Yeah. So 15, 15 to 20 years ago. Looking at a comment here, uh, White Whale says his first con was in 96, and everyone he met actually signed covers then. I think one of the cons that I'd probably hit was probably in the early 90s, maybe 92, 90. Jim Lee was signing every cover. And and then I only got interior panels. When yeah. Am I lying? No, I think I may be lying about that. I think a couple of my Bagley's are on the cover, but they were using like those metallic pins. Yep. Metallic. I have one somewhere. And then a yep. lot of the others were actually inside the splash page. And then I think uh, Comic Books NYC made a comment earlier. It scrolled past about um, Kirby signatures. All To answer your question, uh, comic books NYC. All the Kirby signatures I've ever seen have inside. been inside on the splash page above yep. the past. I've never seen them anywhere else. Uh, I, I've I've only seen him sign above the splash page, and it was a Fantastic Four one seventy five where he signed it and Stan signed it. Mm. And it's right. It's underneath. Um, what's that character that? he fights whoever galactus is fighting there it's right below it right there and i've seen that book and i asked somebody you know 
about that. And he said, that's how they was done back then. You didn't have them touch the cover because a pen would go right through it. Yep. And paint pens would bleed. Yep. And you have to look at everything from that standpoint because I had a few paint pen books. But, you know, in 1990, but White Whale's right because I remember going to a con in 95 and it was half and half. I mean, literally, I remember getting a uh, few signed books right there. I remember getting sketches and artwork and, you know, that's what's in, in I have a folder here of artwork of uh, people to draw their, their, their signature character. Yeah. Um, Trimpy was always doing Wolverine. It was, mm. and it was that short um, eared cat like featured Wolverine, more animalistic. Um, he was doing that. And, but he was signing covers of, Hulk 181s, <laughs> uh, you Crazy. know. And I, yeah. I, think, I think that's like one of the things to just um, to be aware of. Like if, if you buy collections or if you buy books randomly, it always helps to open the books up and look inside. Because you yes. know what you're going to find. Uh, I've almost given away a couple of books that um, I purchased as part of collections that have signatures. And of course, I'm not as familiar with the book as, as the original owner was. And you'd be surprised how books will get back around and no one actually notices that they're signed. So it's just one of those things to crack it open and, and flip through it, see what's there. Now on, on the, the, this book here, this Bernie Wrightson actually has two signatures in it. It's signed by Bernie Wrightson in 2006. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the first signed book I ever had would ever in a slab. This was the first slab book I ever uh, I've ever like I've ever the earliest one I've I've ever seen, and it says Bernie Wrightson is written on the first page in marker. Yep. So Bernie was signing the interior pages for a while. Actually, if you ever see, there's a lot of them with him on the inside, with Lane Wynn on the inside as well. Is it Len Wynn or Lean Wen? I, I I always ask that cover. By the way, and, uh, underrated cover by the way of the Pieta. Uh, T J Watson knows what I'm talking talk about we call that the pieta pose um which is somebody holding somebody else uh think of infinite crisis or um what's the one where cyclops is holding professor x yeah P professor x yep the pieta so that, that 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 is a well a well copied pose <laughs> oh yeah who, who wore it well yeah i love it I, I think it's a actually that's one of tj you know Hope TJ doesn't mind me sh sharing this, but we talk about odd things that we collect because him and I have this weird thing. I'm like, I like certain kinds of golden age books. He likes certain kind of golden age books too. And I always show him, Hey, have you ever seen this one? He goes, no, but that's a cool one. Put it on the list. And so we keep track of each other's nerds. Uh, yeah. Nerds. Nerds. <laughs> so, but so uh, to me, that's also what makes the hobby fun. It is. It is because there are so many nuances to this thing. Right. And it's like you can you can you could chase keys and chase big books. Yep. And kind of mix it up and just collect some quirky, weird stuff. And it's still fun, you know? I'm gonna warn you right now. 2019 is going to be crazy for anybody, especially me, because I honestly think that if you go down this dark, dark path of golden age. <laughs> You are going to find something and you're going to say, I got to have that. And you're going to look and you're not, it's not so much the money and it's not the money. It's scarcity versus rarity on those is a little different. Yeah, man. Those prices are pretty much what anybody's willing to pay. Unlike there's an overstreet guide and there's a, this guide and there's that guide. Yep. They don't know how to do golden age. Yep. They've never been able to do it. Yep. Um, the fact that I have, I've gotten books that are dirt cheap at golden age that all of a sudden are worth more now just because somebody paid a lot for it one time, you know, yep. Yep. Uh, when you see 24 on the registry of CGC, but you've all seen the cover, you know, I, one thing I am not buying is decapitation covers. Cause that's crazy. But there are people that collect the decapitation covers, the bondage covers, the, what I, what is known on the SOTI, the seduction of the innocent. I love those, you know, uh, I always want to do one of those Seduction of the Innocent Wertheim videos uh, with anybody who has any of those books. They're, they're kind of cool. Uh, some of them are really expensive. Some of them aren't. So, But anyway, part of my Christmas gift was a mystery mail call unboxing. And I want to get this 
show this. Let's do it. And uh, I don't know what's in here. So recap was I got those two Stanley signed books for Christmas from my wife, and they came with two mystery boxes from Flip Mode Comics. Now, both those Stanley books are real significant to me because they were both signed, and that date on top of that, the date he signed it, is at my actual birthday. So those, and it's Silver Surfer and Thor. So, I mean, it's one of those where, yeah, you need those books, you know. So, brother, right. your wife, your wife is a trooper. For oh, she, she is a fan. So there are, there's a, a stack of books here, and a thank you from Flip Mode, and I don't know what's in here. He said, I hope, I hope you like these. But for every signed book that he gave away during. Um, Christmas, he was giving away uh, mystery boxes, and he had some good ones. He had an Avengers fifty-seven, uh, all Stan Lee stuff, and he didn't overcharge for him. He wasn't like gouging because he was dead. He was actually doing a great deal. I mean, think about it. He had twenty-five of them, and all twenty-five sold in two days. So it wasn't like he was overcharging or anything. Else. And that's all on. In, he's on Instagram. It's Flip Mode Comics. Um, he doesn't just do signature series, but he's got a lot of good Golden Age stuff too. This guy, he's like us, Reggie. He loves a painter's tape. Oh, that he's, my... he's saying you got two signature books. You get two two packets. Wow. wow. Okay. So this is box number one. And if anybody knows anything about these books, I'm going to say if I know them, I'll say it. If I don't, hopefully Reggie will know because if there's an X-Men in here, I might not know. Uh, okay, here's one I don't know. Titans number eight. Rebirth, Teen Titans, DC. Reggie, I'm going to let you pass on this one. <laughs> uh, tell me if anybody knows anything about the. Oh, Maddie Thanatos is here. Maddie, tell me about Rebirth, Titans number eight. If this is a key book, that's going over here. Uh, Siege. Oh, Siege number one with. Um, I don't know. It's a Secret Wars. I can't tell if that's Wasp Ant Man or. Something down there. That's a pretty cool cover. Uh, how to draw Gwenpool. Uh, how to draw Gwenpool in easy steps. Well, that's good for artists, but it's kind of funny right there, if you ask me. Uh, Green Lantern, uh, number 10 and number 8, The Rebirth, uh, from Matty Thanatos. What do you think of these? You know, you could tell me what you think of this. Is a Halloween trick or treat looks like cover. Uh oh, we got an all new X Men coming up. Mm -mm. So here's an all new X Men with Stuart Immonen. I don't know. I had that book once upon a time. Yeah, it's a thirteen. Yeah. Uh, I guess the old it's, old it's old school. That that's that that's the original X Men right there, right? Those are the four. Yeah, because I think that team was brought back from time. Oh, okay. And here's one uh, all-new X-Men number 19. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen that one before. Yeah. So, anyone know that? So, let's see. All right. Mystery box number two. Number two. Uh, Squadron Sinister number three. Yes. Hyperion. I love a Hyperion. No. There's a character we should, R Reggie. You got to, if you like Sentry, Hyperion's just, he answers I, the Sentry. I haven't part. looked into him. I, I like Bob Reynolds, though, man. Yeah. I Here's like a Deathstroke. Who? Death, yeah, Deathstroke. <laughs> uh, Spider Women, Zero G Comic Kick. I don't know what this is. This is Silk, number seven. Ooh, this is a weird cover, but I kind of like this. All new X Men number forty on on Toppins. A lot of all new X Men here. That's cool. So this Brian Michael Bendis, he's pretty good on here. Uh oh, he's gone. He's at oh, he's, he's at DC dead. now, right? He's dead to me. Here's a uh, Quasar. I love me some Quasar too. I'm not honestly, I do love Qu Quasar. Star Fox right here. Thanos' I only, brother. I only own one Quasar book in my entire collection. There's one I'm looking for. Um, uh, it's Salt on Marvel's tomb. Oh, oh, Tony, they're going after the boy's tomb. And there's a Flash 42. So the Flash 42, Sins of the Father. 
Oh, wow. Isn't that the whole story behind Barry Allen? Um, nice Deathstroke. Thank you, Carlito. I appreciate that. Hyperion might be my favorite Marvel cat. Thanatos. Loves really? it. <laughs> he says it's a Hyperion. Really? Yeah. The Squadron the Sinister cool. is kind of cool. I mean, that's the most obscure character ever. Mm -hmm. Leave it to Matt to be like, "That's my guy." Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, at least because I, I I get ridiculed quite a bit for Pace Pot Pete, and it's funny because you know, Great Legend and I we always joke that Strange Tales One Hundred Four is a key for Pace Pot Pete. If you've ever read any Spider Man when he has to fight the Trapster, he always calls him Pace Pot Pete as an insult and it's great because the name was so stupid when they came up with it that they just insult him for life. It's such a good, I like Quasar. Tony uh, said Quasar is the poor man's Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Oh, uh, uh, that's oh, really good. You guys are funny, man. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. So thank you very much, honey, for the, the books. I don't know if any of them are valuable, but you know what? They're all reads. Either way, because I'm I am gonna learn to read DC um, more than Swamp Thing. Alan Moore's Swamp Thing though is better written than anything Marvel's ever done. I uh, I mean, I think I could get White Whale to agree with me on that, or anybody who's ever read Alan Moore. Uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run never had anything like it. Um, so a quick recap: um, the two main books outside of the JD Kids Variant Edition of Silver Surfer 4 that my wife got me was a Thor 161 is a Galactus versus Ego with Thor on the cover there signed by Stan Lee on my birthday. So that's the key with that one. I do have, I have both these books, none signed and none slabbed and Reggie to add the discussion. We paid a premium for these for two things. Obviously the man yep. on his birthday Signed it on my birthday. So yeah. I that's think cool. that's an emotional book right there. That's really cool. And the other book was my second favorite character, also signed on my birthday, same day. It's not really my second favorite. It's one in one A. Silver Surfer, Stanley. And a beautiful spot, by the way, right there where you can see it, right over the sun, with a little John Buscema cover and John Buscema drawing, drawing Spy Spider-Man right there. That is, and, actually, uh, that is actually a really good placement for that. Yeah, I, I, I that's one of the things you know when you got a guy who's been doing it for a while, they know how to do it. Um, you know, but again, the whole point of this video, uh, like Jeffrey Comic Con's video the other day, is collect what you want to collect. And what do I collect? You know, there's 27 people in here, and go check out Jeffrey Comic Con's video and Reggie's video about signature series. Or and it's not why you collect, but what collecting methods you have. Me, I trade moderns for old. I do that. I am one of those guys that if I can get a deal on a few modern books that I think I could flip quickly to trade, and I do trade a lot. That's one of the things that I think is a lost art in this industry that allows me to get a lot of value for there. If you sell for cash, you're going to get less than you are than a trade from a professional eBay is going to take a percentage of what you got in sales. But if you can say, if you're trying to sell that book for 400 bucks and I'm trying to, this book's last sales $400 on eBay, I think we can probably come up to a deal. And 90% of the time, it might be a, a raw or two changing hands that wouldn't, would really matter. Um, dealers know what they want. And I want to take the dealers that I, I always try to find books that would have a hard time selling that i'm really in, interested in when i trade and one of my methods of collecting is why i collect is i read them as well um, um mostly i'm rereading uh like uh i'm actually going back now to reread a ton of stuff on the marvel unlimited app much more than i've ever thought i ever would have i was like i'll never use that app now i can't get i can't put it down you i know. do a lot bro it's so good. It's and it, it's so good how you can change it from being a full page to a panel to a portion of a panel. Yep. Um, but I'm rereading a lot of old stuff because I don't really like the new stuff. So I literally use it every night before bed. I will sit there and read digital comics before bed. You can't do that with an actual comic book. You know what I'm saying? No. Most of the time, I wake up sleep with the thing on my face. But that's yep. Not <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know what? And, and somebody brought up uh, Maddie Thad had his last night. We talked about blind people have it really rough, and I hope nobody slams us on this. But um, I, I do know that they, there's people that do audio books, audio comics, where they do voices and they hire voice actors to do them. Oh, that's crazy. And I've seen one or two of them, and they're pretty good. I mean, they're not. It's it's the it's just the comic panels with the voices and they kind of move the screen over to make it seem like it's motion. It's yeah. pretty good. So here, so. before we transition off this, I think you touched on something very that may make for a discussion at some point. Um, the, the idea of the trade as a art uh, and as a, as a means to improve one's collection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that that goes to, you know, one of the points that I made in the comments on my video was about the valuation is not just for the purpose of sale. It's for right. the purpose of insurance. It's for the purpose of trade. It's for many purposes beyond just selling the book. You have to have some idea what the book is worth. But I, I, the trading is something I've never done, but I've been trying to wrap my mind around it. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, most of us are what? Selling a book because you're trying to buy something. Right now, now, what would happen if you could just cobble together a trade for that same book with net without ever touching the cash? Yep. It still it still works. It and, works. And at the end of the day, whether you're selling or you're trading, more than likely you're you're getting getting rid of books that you don't necessarily want, right? Or mm -hmm. you're you're exchanging books that you like for a book that you love. Correct. You know? That's a great way to put and, it. And so I think that there may be something to that. You know, operating in themes, right? And so yep. this trading idea is something that's been on my mind because I, I think that there's something there, you know? I will say this. The, with trading at cons, it's it's done right there. I mean, I carry – I go to a con. I've got my – if I'm not dressed in full – I do the con costume and co cosplay one day. Yeah. The day before, the first day I'm there – and the last day, if it's a three-day con, if I'm there for all three days, or the first time I'm there, I am in normal, the hat and the gear, and I'm carrying, I'm packing, I'm packing slabs, I'm packing raws, I'm packing. And I'm looking around for a book, and you know, I will do my keys. And how I got that Strange Tales 104, like I said, I traded away a Spider-Man 298 and 299. Yeah. Why? Because they're so freaking hot right now, but I know there's a bunch of them out there yeah if i ever want them again i could go get them yeah i'm not gonna find so many strange tales 104s they're more rare is that yep. a good way to put it i'm good with that so um i wouldn't say they're rare but they're just more more rare but one of the things is when you have the slab people flock to you and this 300 has been the 300 has been asked about by a few people saying um not not here but like that people know that i i got it slabbed and i got it created on the cgc website and they're saying hey i know you want this book and i have this book in a certain grade would you be willing to do a straight swap for that and that and that's a book where i know it's worth a lot right now it's very high and these are comic dealers that know that they can take that and move it from easier than they can moving this other book that this crazy guy JD wants and not many people want that book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do. And that's one of the things there's not, there's very few golden age collectors or obscure golden age collectors or this kind of cult collector. But the problem is that the golden age collectors spend stupid amounts of money on stupid books. <laughs> I mean, we buy, if it's just because this guy did it there and it's because of the scarcity, I think has a lot to do with it, but also because of the, um, there aren't many of them. And I think that's part of it saying he who has the most toys wins maybe mentality. But to me it is, I've always wanted that book for that reason of that guy's first writing of that story. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one of the things there and trading has allowed me to do that. Yep. Um, uh, trust is a major factor when dealing online. I deal with the CGC website and I deal with three people who I trade with quite a bit. We do a lot of trading back, back and forth um, if it's not in person. And that's one where you literally have to say, okay, I'm shipping the book to you. 
here's the invoice ship yeah. your book and you ship the invoice back now I don't recommend everybody do that unless you have a reputation with this guy or you can verify everything it always is good if they're well known yeah. um, and that's how you know people are like oh I've traded with JD a few times there are guys that have traded with me um, Captain America 100s, uh, Black Panther, Fan uh, Fantastic Four 52, um, ASM 14. I mean, back and forth, books have changed hands where, you know, people on the CGC website say, hey, that's my book, you know, because it's a really rare version of a book. Mm -hmm. um, it's so great that the trading part is still there on that site. But when you go to cons, I'm one of the rare people that um, I would say I'm we're scarce that actually like to trade because the dealers like people like us because we're not bringing them the rare book to trade with them. I'm not going to bring a spellbound three or a spellbound seven from the golden age to trade with a guy who's trying to make money on this yeah. industry. Yeah. What he wants is the ASM 300. He wants the books that move fast, hot, whatever the hot book hot. is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're, we're about to get off air, right? And uh, yep. We can work out this trade for that uh, amazing fantasy back there. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of hot books for you. It, it, it would be a purple label, my friend. <laughs> I'm that good. is a purple label. I'm good with the purple label, my friend. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of chips in it. And it's a nice <laughs> cut down the side. But it's, it is old. It is old. So, uh, there's a guy here who I actually have his card that both Tony Sanders and I have dealt with. Um, that Tony, just to let you know. He contacted me. We need to talk about your Cap America. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, he 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 has some goals he has, and we have a guy that a mutual friend that he doesn't live that far from who I deal with once in a while, who I've traded with. Um, he deals he deals with me in the Golden Age and Silver Age, but he moves. Reggie, he moves something like thirteen to fourteen long boxes per con, and he has nothing but modern x-men's and things that everybody wants What? yeah it's things like because you're you're an ideal person for this discussion of signature books and anything modern or what i consider modern is anything who loves the x-men because they are so hot and yeah. you can never x-men will never go down in value no matter everybody's like oh they're not at the mcu they're the only property of marvel not in the mcu that has continued whether or not they were ever going to go to the MCU or not, Fantastic Four did have a dip. People have to remember, Fantastic Four actually dipped for a while after that movie, which made no sense to me because I'm like, that movie has nothing to do with anything with the comics. The Fantastic Four should be one of the most sought-after books ever, you know? But it was just really cool. Um, and one of the things that he, he highlights in is um, he will buy as many X-Men, Wolverines, anything that's popular at that time. Ant-Man, um, Spider-Gwen is huge. He just he was contacting me today, asking me how many of these do I have any of these books? And I said, well, I've got about nine or ten of them on his list of a, a hundred he's looking for. He goes, here's my price list. Tell me what you're interested in. Here's my trade value. Here's my cash value. Give, give you an idea. Cash value is five bucks. Let's say trade value is ten dollars. Okay. That gives you an um, idea of trade value. Because nobody what, wants to part so with cash. He, he has long boxes full of very popular books for the purpose of trading them at cons. Yeah, he he buys. Uh, he buys like if he goes to a con that he's not working, he might buy an entire collection out. Wow. And he's a teacher. It's not like he's sitting in the money. He puts up his own cash and then he goes to other cons and figures he can do it better or make it market it better or do it better. Slab it, do this, do what he wants to do. He buys distressed stores in the all around the mid Midwest. And he's just a young guy. He's a really cool dude. I mean, Tony Sanders has dealt with him before. Um, we have dealt with him and we have got to say that he's just been He's really easy to deal with. Um, he actually contacted me because of the master of Kung Fu that I I got graded from him that I got a 9-2. He's like, do you still have it? I'm like, I kept the birthday one, but I, that one I traded away for this. He's like, oh, because it just skyrocketed in value. Yeah. But he we traded away. He trades for hot things he can move because he has a personal collection. But like... Most comic book professionals or people that are professional sellers of comics, they have lived by one motto. The really good ones is everything is for sale. Yep. No matter what. 
Yeah. Me, I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that. I am a collector. I don't sell this to make money. I there is an investment, obviously, yeah. in some of these. Um, and it sits there and it's insured and everything else. Uh and it's done better than the market has in certain times of my life. And sometimes it's just been ridiculous. Um, but to each his own. I mean, collect what you want to collect. Get things signed if you want. I mean, I personally ask everybody that you pay, uh, I really didn't need your whole opinion on whether I was going to get this book signed. But it was a discussion to see how everybody reacted as well. Yep. And I love the fact that you know, Reggie asked the question, is a book worth more if somebody signed it? But he didn't say worth more dollar value. Well, would said. you would you do it for yourself? Yep. Whether it be money, pride, or anything else, what you want. And that's where, like Jeffrey said the other day, like Tony said, do it. All this is is do whatever you want to do, you know? Oh, well, that tells everybody I want to sing from is the, dude, man, Gil Kane. Is Gil Kane just passed not that long ago? He used to sign Green Lanterns, like a ton of them. Uh, who else? You know, I'm trying to think. So, uh, Thanatos, who Green Lantern guys? I don't even know who did them. Ethan Van Shriver, I know, did a bunch because he's on a few books. So, anyway, we're about to end this soon. Uh, Reggie, you still uh, there? Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you want to close on your signature? I definitely promote you at the video of yours. It's part of the whole thing. Oh, uh, no. So, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people here already follow the channel. Um, uh, I would say if you don't follow the channel, check me out. Uh, generally speaking, I release content Monday through Thursday, always around 3.30. I go live a couple of times a week. Right now, I am doing a giveaway uh, where I'm giving away a 9.2 of uh, New Mutants 98 white pages once I reach 2,100 subs. So if you haven't subscribed to me, definitely do that. Watch the video where I make this announcement and just let me know what you're in. You're automatically in the contest if you're a sub and you say that you want to be in. And um, the numbers are creeping up there, man. So little by little, we're getting closer to 2,100. And as soon as we do, we are going to randomize this thing and give away a pretty awesome book. So JD, thank you, brother, for allowing me to come on the channel. I thank you. I just time. noticed. I've always talked about that Eternals behind you. <laughs> yeah. Who signed that one? Wolfman. That's see. There you go. Yeah, Wolfman. I actually did not meet him um, yeah. when I was on the hunt for the Eternals book because uh, this was like months and months ago. I started wrapping my mind around uh, Kirby. It started to appreciate his artwork and him as a talent. Yeah. And, and I started doing all this research. I started watching all these documentaries. I actually have a video coming out about this. Um, started watching all these documentaries about him and how talented he was. And I was like, you know what? I am getting the Eternals. And so I went out and I bought um, almost, I got almost two full runs of the Eternals because yeah. I just really appreciated uh the artist that he was and the fact that he created the Eternals, he, he yep. did the scripting, he did the story, he did the artwork. That to me is like, like a testament to his creativity. Nice. And so I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get one signed by him, but I got, I got Wolfman. That's my theory on Nova. That's exactly my theory on Nova. Um, one of the great things is uh, we just talked about Eternals and Kirby, and I talk about Busima a lot, and we talked about Wrightson and everything else. There, you Everybody has their Rushmore of who they love the most. It takes, and I will tell you, mine has evolved as I got older. I started appreciating Frazetta and Wrightson as I started to gain, get older. Not that I'm diminishing Kirby and Buscema in any way, because they're the part of the there. But the modern artists that I, I was that have done the Eternals recently on the 2000s, have you read those that series, the Neil Gaiman series and everything else? I want to see that movie. So when I, they make Eternals, that's the one I want. I've heard about it, but I have not, uh, and I've seen it. The artwork actually looks pretty cool, but I haven't yeah. picked it up yet. 
it's cool though just know that the bad guys are the horde and i think that is where you should that's where the mcu is going to pull their thing from a little they, spec story right there they might good stuff man I'm, i may have to check that out yeah it's thank really good thank you brother for having me on thank you very much reggie thank you guys very much for joining us about our signature series and um our signatures if do what you want pretty much is what we said uh pay what you want but um these are my two new babies here it's two stanley signed books signed on my birthday two fellas you know know are knee deep in my heart um as well as the number one cover that come out christmas week was in a delato it was my wife who got me the JD Children variant of Silver Surfer 4. This is what I'm going to leave it on. R Reggie always moves the camera to the last one. I'm going to leave us on this. <laughs> Thank you all very much for joining. Merry uh, Happy New Year, everybody. I'll see you all on the 31st. I'm supposed to, uh, I don't know how many of us are going to be on there, nine or 10, but um, it should be fun. So, Thank you guys very much. Talk to you soon.